My name is Thaddeus Seymour. I'm privileged to have served as the 12th president of Rollins College, and it's such an honor to be able to talk about the contributions to our college and our community of Edwin Osgood Grover. I'm sitting in the New Leaf Bookstore, which is a bookstore operated by the Friends of the Winter Park Public Library, and this is an appropriate place to be because Winter Park's first bookstore was established by Edwin Osgood Grover. It was called The Bookery. Now, Grover grew up son of a minister, and his early career was in business, selling art supplies and equipment. But he loved reading and he loved books. He went to Dartmouth, which is why I'm wearing my Dartmouth necktie, and while he was there, he worked with Richard Hovey to publish the Dartmouth Songbook, and some years later wrote the authoritative history of Cask and Gauntlet, which is their leading honorary society. He always loved books and always loved writing and wrote chapbooks while he was running his business. But when Hamilton Holt came to Rollins as president in 1925, he wanted to make a statement about education, and his friend Edwin Osgood Grover was just the person to be appointed professor of books. This was a title that Ralph Waldo Emerson had developed. He said, you know, in colleges, what students really need to know about is books, their content, and their impact. So Edwin Osgood Grover came to Rollins as professor of books. Now, his contributions to Rollins include working with Hamilton Holt to establish the animated magazine. He worked with uh, students in his wonderful course on uh, books and their history and their content and their importance. He set up a press called the Angel Alley Press, which he was able, a name which he was able to track back to his ancestors who had had the press in England in the very early days of the book. He continued to publish his chapbooks from time to time. He worked with student poets to publish a collection of student poetry. And so anything having to do with books is immediately associated with the name Edwin Osgood Grover. Now, he was raised a uh, son of a congregational minister in the North, deeply committed to racial equity. His family had been active abolitionists, and he grew up in uh, St. Johnsbury, Vermont, and other communities in the North. And when he came to Winter Park, he and his wife, Murdy, were very committed to the minority community in uh, Winter Park, the African-American community, through the Congregational Church, where he taught a Sunday school class, he and his wife established a day nursery for the children of African-American families so that mothers and fathers could do their work. He got involved in the Depew Nursing Home to be sure that African-American residents were, had access to the health care they needed and deserved. He was professor of books, and when a terrible tragedy came and his wife, Murdy, was killed in an automobile accident, he asked friends not to send flowers, but to send books to the Hannibal Square School. And first of all, there was a bookcase in the hallway and those books went in there. It was so popular that soon a room was set aside to be the library, and eventually a library was built adjacent to the school and named for Murty Grover. So once again, he was carrying the message of the book to the whole community. He was honored when he uh, reached his peak at Rollins with the decoration of honor, and as it was presented by Mr. Halstead Caldwell, he said, Edwin O. Grover buys books, sells books, edits books, writes books, collects books, knows books,
talks books and loves books. If ever there was a man qualified to realize Emerson's dream of a professor of books and to hold the first chair of that name in an American college, Dr. Grover is that happy man. Now, in addition to his interest in service and the community and books, and particularly his role as chair of the Hannibal Square Associates, he was very interested in the work of Dr. Mead, who was the developer of the orchid as we know it today. And he got the homeowners working with a young student who had worked with Dr. Mead to agree to set aside four large plats of land, which today are the Mead Botanical Garden. And that would not be here if Edwin Osgood Grover had not put his energy and characteristic commitment behind the Mead Botanical Garden. So the professor of books was really the professor of all issues of the, the liberal arts and a liberal life and a life well led. Right.